Hi, this is a brief video just to explain the situation at the moment. It's difficult at the practice in that the procedures that we've used in the past are no longer really applicable. The most efficient way of cleaning your teeth produces an aerosol and it's this aerosol that may carry the virus for a period of time which may land on the surfaces or stay in the air and we do not know for how long. Your safety has always been our priority and we want to maintain that. We just don't know if you're infected, not infected or immune. But we do know lots of people come in and we don't know how long the virus will last within the environment and that is a concern. So whoever we see can get it. That can be you, me, my nurse, my receptionist, anybody. Do we want to take that risk? It's going to take longer to tidy up the surgery than it is for the time that you're in it. So we'll have to prioritise those patients who are high risk. For those that you that can maintain your oral hygiene and keep in the green, we'll see to you as soon as possible. Fortunately, the funding for NHS dentistry has deteriorated over the last 20 years and there are many problems which has forced most dentists to go down the private route in order to provide an adequate service. The problem of losing dentists is compounded by the lack of our governing body to regulate well. We seem to be regulated more by lawyers than we are by members of the profession. It's gone too far the other way. It's very well having a vision, but you need a plan. And there's very little about dentistry in this plan. Successive governments have known about the advantages of water fluoridation in that it reduces the risk of general anaesthetic by about 30%. Similarly, the other vulnerable group have been neglected. The government's think tank even says that prevention is better than cure, works financially too. Perhaps when we do go back to work, the government will pay for prevention rather than just extraction.